in this presentation, we're going to look at a, uh, an example of the RONS test, which is a sort of procedure for detecting non-randomness in a dichotomous variable, okay, or binary variable, or something like that. Okay, we have 50 athletes as a sporting event, and they were selected each day of the event for mandatory drugs testing. Okay, so on a particular day, 25 female competitors were selected and 25 male select, uh, pet competitors were selected. So they essentially they all go in to turn up at their drugs testing procedure and they do them one by one, okay? And we want to see if there's any sort of randomness here, okay? So just as a remark, so what we have here is seemingly the first three were female competitors, male, female, male, female, male, male, male. We want to see if this uh, ordering is random. So we're going to use the runs test to see if it is random. Okay. So use the runs test to test the randomness of the set of observations given a 5% significance level. Okay. So let's start into that. So, so here is the raw data there. Okay. And what we're going to do is count out all of the runs. Okay. So I'm going to do just a sort of quick, so quick, quick, uh, make a few quick remarks. So that's a run of three there. One, two, three females, a male. That's a different run. Female, male, female, males, female, males, and so on. Now, just the way I have it ordered here, have it ordered, is that we have male, male, okay, and the run continues on the next line. It's just I had to sort of uh, present it over like five lines just to make it a little bit easier to follow. So when you're actually counting through the runs, just remember that this run continues on to the next line. So it's a run of four rather than two runs of two, you know, okay? So essentially a run changes when the opposite, the other um, outcome occurs, okay? Now, so we have 25 males, 25 female competitors, okay? So for a large sample te runs test where both sample sizes are greater than 10, the test statistic is a standard random normal variable. So this actually turns into a, a procedure very like the Z test that you might learn when you're started starting out with uh, statistics, okay? So at a 5% significance level, essentially the, the test statistic with an absolute value of uh, greater than 1.96 indicates non-randomness, okay, according to this test, okay? So it turns into very much like the Z test, which you might have learned about earlier in your statistical career. Okay, so let's just count through all the runs. Okay, now just, I actually have one of them highlighted here, just actually, I didn't need to highlight both of them. I can, I hope you can sort of see the contrast between the two. And again, just to remark that this little red arrow here just indicates that the run continues onto the next line, okay? So let's just count them through them there. Actually, what I'm going to do is just pause that and fix the focus. So I just unpaused it there. The focus is can jump around a bit. So let's just count through. Uh, one. So there's three females there. That's a run. That's one. A male. That's another run. So two runs. Female, male, female, so we're up to five runs. Males, that's six runs. Female, male, eight runs, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now remember, it picks up here, still on twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, picks up here, so we're still on sixteen. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Okay. So there are no, the, the 23 runs, okay? So that's that's fine, that's our observed value. So the expected number of runs, so there's two calculations where we have to make, and essentially they're equivalent of the mean and the standard deviation, okay? So this is probably a formula that's going to be given to you in the back of the exam paper or something like that. But the expected number of runs, R bar, is equal to 2N1, which is the sample size of one group. So let's just arbitrate where we both have 25 and 25, I picked that actually easily, so they actually would make for easy calculations. But you could have 15 and 25, doesn't matter. So 2N1, let's just say arbitrarily pick uh, N1 for females, female competitors. 2N1, so 2 times 25 times 25 over 25 plus 25 uh, plus 1. 
Okay, so the expected number of runs in this for this scenario is 26. So 23 and uh, 26, not a massive fluctuation. So you can sort of already get a sense of where this is going. Okay, so we'll just go on to the next page here. So this, so that is actually, uh, so we use a little formula to calculate the, ex the, the equivalent of the, the mean under the null hypothesis. Now we're uh, calculating the standard deviation or the equivalent of the standard deviation. This calculation is a little bit more involved. So what we have here is 2n1 n2 times 2n1 n2 minus n1 minus n2 over n1 plus n2 squared times n1 plus n2 minus 1. So essentially it helps that actually I picked out 25 there and 25 because it hopefully will make the calculations easier to follow. Okay, so 2 times n1 times n2 is 2 times 25 times 25 which is 2 times 625 and then we have 2 times uh, 625 there as well minus n1 minus n2 so minus 25 minus 25 that is that will actually work out to be 1250 times 1200 okay n1 plus n2 squared is 25 plus 25 squared which is 2250 uh, n1 plus n2 minus 1 is basically 50 div uh, t um, divided by f uh, 50 minus 1, which is 49. So there we have it there. You can just sort of like sort of see how you feel about that. Uh, I uh, calculate the uh, standard deviation. Oh, sorry, that's the variance there, okay, uh, to be 12.2449, okay. What I need now is the square root of that, okay, and uh, so I just pause it there and just like uh, set up a new page. So, sorry, I just have to unpause that there a second. So that is the variance actually, so I just actually should point that out. That is the variance. And we're going to use the square root of that. So the test statistic is... Um, Essentially, it's a z-random variable, okay? That's the observed number of runs minus the expected number of runs over the standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance. So we have 23 minus 26 over the square root of 12.2449. I'm just going to sort of simplify matters. I even should have put that as 12.25, just, but anyway. So we have minus 3 over 3.5, and the test statistic is minus 0.857. So is the absolute value of that greater than 1.96? No, it's not. We failed to reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that the order is purely random. The alternative hypothesis is that it's not random. And in this situation, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So it's safe to, no, there's no reason not to assume randomness, essentially. So that is the runs test, and we leave it there.